I work in an innovation center in the use of technology for education. So uh, my principal role here is uh, to support and facilitate uh, educational projects using technology. Uh, I have been working with Open Educational Resources uh, three years ago and from Open Courseware, Tecnológico de Monterrey is member since 2008. And in the picture is uh, some colleagues uh, that also works as researchers in the educational, uh, the, the School of Graduate, the School of Education. And I put here this reflection because uh, we believe that we are in a new revolution of new competences and a new li digital literacy. Uh, so as learners and producers of, of content on the internet, uh, I'm going to present uh, these uh, slides in three uh, sections. Uh, Tecnológico Monterrey, where I came from, uh, about Temoa Info, uh, it used to be a project that we called Knowledge Hub, and then uh, some practical uses about open educational resources. I'm going to uh, move uh, very quickly on the first slides because uh, I think we already know what is an open educational resource and I'm, going, I'm not going to make uh, too much detail about that. Uh, I rep uh, I'm here from Tecnológico de Monterrey. We are non-profit, independent, non-government operational support. Uh, we have um, campuses all over Mexico, 3D3 campuses. Uh, we have a virtual university system, and also we have uh, another uh, University Tech Millennium with uh, 32 campuses. Uh, the virtual university was founded in 1989 and we had uh, used technology for distance education since then. Uh, the last technology that we uh, are using is mobile learning, the use of mobile devices, uh, cell phones and uh, cell, uh, MP3, MP4 players. And about the project of temoa.info. Uh, before was named Knowledge Hub. It's a three years project. Uh, we are aware about uh, the advances of technology worldwide. And we, we, we see a universe of potential on the internet of open educational resources and educational resources. But, but we also see some challenges so uh, I'm going to talk about those challenges uh, and the experiences in the next slides. We see uh, s different challenges about economic inequality uh, between countries, digital divide, dig dig uh, educational gap, and we see that knowledge uh, has redefined the basis for economic activity as well as the societal role of, of universities. Uh, we see some competences that needs to be developed. One of them is information literacy needed. Uh, another one is uh, digital media literacy and some others. Uh, but according to the American Library Association, uh, they said that it's available, the information is available on full turret. And there, there is need f to the new society to develop new skills to recognize the good information from the bad information on the internet. So another, the last slide from reference is that we see that in a digital, uh, global digital ecosystem, knowledge flows freely, regardless of frontiers or boundaries in regions or nations. And we need to overcome some basic requirements for this use. Uh, I mentioned some of them, digital divide is one of them. And we see uh, the lack of awareness about open educational resources. Not many people knows what is that. And this slide is just to put the framework of reference about what we understand about open educational resources. Uh, is a public domain or licensed for some uses? 
Here are some projects that we are aware from. And Temoa is a catalog of open educational resources. We are trying to index all these projects in a single web page. So we are what somebody called infomediary uh, website where we add uh, valuable uh, information about some educational resources. And this uh, is for free. Uh, we don't charge. You can visit the web page and you can search uh, the educational resources. We are trying to make easy the, the finding of educational resources on the internet and to adopt by other educators. So the, the website, we have a criteria, we have a definition of open educational resources, but we need to codify that, that definition in the system with some rules. Or what, uh, how we are going to index all these educational resources available on the internet, so we have to evaluate if the website is public and inclusive, uh, full content, free, no charges, permanent publication without subscriptions, and educational resources in the public domain or licensed uh, with an intellectual property and copyright uh, for free. <coughs> we have a quality assurance process uh, that works very simple. It's a workflow. Uh, the, the faculty or the academic of the Technological Monterey suggest the educational resources available on the internet. We are trying to harvest educational resources too from digital repositories. And then we have a peer reviewing process. And then we have a team of libra librarians that, we ha that, that they are validating the, the resources uh, in, the, in the catalog. Some numbers that we have in the catalog from uh, what we call OER providers is our websites. For example, OpenCourseWare MIT is a provider of uh, educational resources. So they license under Creative Commons. Well, we had evaluated 825 sites and we had in that event, uh, we have some data here. For example, only 16% they are using Creative Commons, very few. Uh, in, in the 800 websites that we evaluate. And then only 1% are using open source initiative, GNU, GPL. And most, they are using uh, customized uh, terms of use in the website. Uh, most of them, they are uh, uh, they declaring they are using open educational resources for free, but they are not, not using a specific license per se. We are uh, making a hierarchical classification of knowledge in the website, so uh, to make it easy to browse by subject, you can find educational resources by health sciences or sciences, social sciences, and this is a classification by the Columbia University that is based in the Library of Congress of the United States. We also did a crosswalk metadata because we, we know that it is necessary to have a framework to share data on the internet. So uh, we made the, the work to crosswalk metadata to the catalog and you can find uh, educational resources uh, with a lot of information. You can search by media, uh, audio, video, text documents, multimedia, software, still image, uh, web pages. You can, uh, the educational community at the Tecnológico de Monterrey, uh, they can connect with others. We are promoting a social network of academics. Also, the community can share with uh, social networks like Twitter or Facebook, and they can say that they are using open educational resources for themselves and put it on Facebook on or other networks. And we are trying to implement a uh, OER content playlist of educational resources. Uh, for example, OER as textbooks, uh, alternatives, anthologies of resources, OER as reusable resource, or OER as learner-generated modified content. 
For example, this is a course uh, open uh, from one professor, Introduction to Physics Mechanics, and we can see a lot of metadata around here or descriptors, the syllabus of the course, uh, topics, uh, the subscription feed to, uh, to the internet for mobile also, uh, the possibility to share with friends and legal terms that we are using Creative Commons. Also here, some other metadata, syllabus, bibliographic references, instructional metadata of this uh, open educational resource that is a course in this case, and how to cite the open educational resource to use it in a LMS. For example, we are using Blackboard, so the student can uh, make the reference using uh, the APA style. This is how it looks. So I'm going to jump this very fast and talk about some experiences adopting and producing open educational resources. <coughs> Tecnológico Monterrey proposed uh, an adoption process of open educational resources and f f to the faculty. And the idea here is uh, at first we are going to search open educational resources, for example, uh, from management, computer science, then we are going to make the selection of those open educational resources, for example, open courseware, and then we are going to start a design process, the availability, the, uh, availability of educational resources and selected courses that we are going to implement open educational resources, the design process. Then we have a course design with the support of instructional designers, the professor and open educational resources adoption and use sharing experiences and improvement. We had uh, an institutional call to faculty in 2009 uh, to foster the adoption process of open educational resources into their courses. And we have some testimonials uh, available on the internet if you would like to, to read them later. Uh, is, is open, you can read them all. all the, uh, they are professors in several knowledge disciplines. And also, uh, a professor, uh, Doctora Maria Soledad, that is not here right now, she, she has a, a course in the master's degree of education. And she had 400 uh, students in the virtual university. And she was using uh, uh, the, the research to implement open educational resources. So the result was uh, the publication of an ebook for free is in Spanish. Uh, you can download it uh, anytime from this digital editorial. Uh, and it's about uh, documented research about the use of open educational resources in the classroom, in several knowledge disciplines and in several uh, educational levels, since uh, basic education uh, to undergraduate and graduate uh, courses. Uh, from physics, mathematics, biology, uh, management, and we are sharing, sharing it uh, digital. We have an uh, interinstitutional uh, project uh, with the funding of Corporación Universitaria para el Desarrollo de Internet in Mexico, CUDI. CUDI is, uh, is held is supporting universities in Mexico to develop projects for research to improve education using internet and also by the Consejo Nacional de Ciencia y Tecnología in Mexico. So the project here was how we can promote open educational resources for basic education. We <laughs> invited six institutions of higher education, 11 professors, five teachers, eight researchers, and uh, we invited 150 teachers in 20 schools in basic education. So uh, we have, to, we have a, f a project in phases. We have to train the, the teachers. We have to develop some skills that they, don't ha they, they didn't have at that time. For example, uh, computer literacy. They didn't know how to use uh, the computer and the internet in, in a basic matter 
So we need to train them first in technological skills and then information literacy and then open educational resources and was something uh, hard to do that because we have to do it in a virtual environment. These 20 schools are in, in Mexico in distributed uh, and dispersed geographically uh, so they are not only in one single state, they are in several states and we need to train them in, with virtual technology. We use uh, blogs, email, uh, recorded uh, video and some results uh, we, we are going, you can download them later from the Congress because I want to show you another project that also we are implementing mobile OER for the training of educational researchers, also an institutional, interinstitutional project. We invited uh, seven institutions of higher education, 22 professors, seven researchers, and we are expecting results this December 2010. This is in progress project right now. Uh, we had implemented an educational repository for open educational resources. We are using this space and wasn't easy to implement that institutional repository inside. Uh, some lessons learned uh, from the group. We had group worked as a community of practice. Uh, the, the basic idea here is we are going to work in a virtual environment and how we are going to work together. Uh, we need to have uh, uh, to, to, to share knowledge and documents and we need uh, a basic uh, platform to work. So we are using Google, Google Sites, uh, Google Blog, email and calendar, Google Docs. And the idea uh, also, we had identified some access barriers uh, in using open educational resources. For example, we see the need for a better technological infrastructure. We see lack of internet access, projectors, computers to display and use the educational resources. We see the lack of awareness of legal issues in access of the resources in terms of licensing, relevance about the content of the material available on the internet, mostly in English, and digital literacy, literacy gap in K-12 schools and lack of awareness in the institutional level, in the managerial levels. Also for project of mobile, mobile open educational resources, uh, the train of educational researchers, the group has experienced several institutional challenges. First, again, legal issues. We how to uh, communicate this to the managerial levels that we need to share knowledge that we are already producing to other universities. Uh, and that was a challenge to implement the digital repository in the institution. Uh, the decision of use international standards of metadata, such as Dublin Core, and the planning, production, and publishing processes according to the open educational resources criteria. Uh, I think it's my time to finish. Uh, here are our emails if you would like to send some questions about these projects. Uh, they are welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>